Hey, what's going on guys? In 2005, Bandai released the Master Grade Zeta Gundam version 2.0. It's known for a really intricate build and a more anime accurate appearance. So naturally, it's one of my favorite Zeta Gundam kits. Now, close to 20 years later, Bandai's decided to one-up that iconic kit with this. The Master Grade Zeta Gundam version Katoki. When this kit was announced, I honestly wondered if the Zeta Gundam even needed a new Master Grade, as I still think that version 2.0 holds up pretty well. However, I can't help but be curious about how much Bandai can improve over that kit. So let's run through this Master Grade Zeta Gundam in the usual four categories. We'll be giving each a score from 1 to 5, so at the end we can tally everything up for an average score. I've also included timestamps in the description if you'd like to jump to a specific section. Alright, now let's dig in by first going over this build. With that version Kaitoki title, and this being a brand new mold, you'd rightfully expect this build to be absolutely crazy. This Zeta Gundam Veraka, however, was surprisingly easy to put together. Don't get me wrong, the engineering in this kit is just as complex as you'd expect, but there was really nothing here that would lock out newer builders. Sure, there are a couple of hinges here and there that you might not want to stress, but I really couldn't find any trouble spots in this build. Getting into the engineering itself, despite how easily everything came together, there's still some really interesting transformation mechanisms in here. The knees are a great example. There's a lot going on here, with additional swivels wrapping around the joint, and even a sliding mechanism for the kneecap. I mean, just look at all these moving pieces here. There's so much engineering packed into such a small piece, and it was really interesting to see it all come together. Same goes for this chest which has extra hinges that allow the abs to push in, a sliding mechanism for the head, and some really cool swivels for the shoulder joint. There's unique engineering in just about every aspect of this kit, and it makes for a really engaging build. Of course, this engineering wasn't just to make the build more interesting. It also leads to a really well-designed kit. I couldn't find many bad nubs on this armor, with most being hidden between pieces or covered up. There was even some undergating here, but it's only on a few white pieces, which probably didn't need it as much as this darker blue. The part separation for this armor was also very well thought out. There's next to no seam lines on this finished build, and the majority of the panel lines are legitimate separation between pieces. Also, unlike that version 2.0, every single yellow highlight on this kit is an actual molded piece. Like these on the legs. Not only is this large thruster an individual piece, but all these small dashes are separate too. Yeah, there is literally no stickers on this kit outside of the token eye and camera lenses, and even those are optional since they come as separate clear pieces. The eyes specifically plug into the head, which I'm always a huge fan of, as it means it would be really easy to change out the eye color with some paint. This part separation is a huge step up from the version 2.0, and would make custom paint jobs a breeze. Speaking of painting, there's really nothing required of you here. Just out of the box, all he needs is some basic panel lining and he'll look fantastic. I did decide to make use of this great part separation though, and added some black inside of the larger thrusters and vents. Like these on the outside of the leg. It was extremely easy to pop off this vent, paint up the inner frame underneath with a Gundam marker, then snap the vent back over top. Literally a 30 second paint job. I did the same for these thrusters on the inside of the leg, and these holes on either side above. From there, I hit this black dash on the waist, just to make it stand out more. It was really quick, as like those vents, this dash is actually inner frame showing through. By the way, the silver accents on this kit feel similar to the gold plating used on the Hyakushiki version 2.0. It's not really plated, instead feeling more like a layer of paint. It's weird, but it doesn't seem to scratch off, so I just left it as is. Still, Heads up for if you wanted to paint this silver. The chest vents are similar to the legs, with inner frame poking through, so I added some black to amp up the depth. There are also some thrusters hidden in the back of the waist skirts that I added some black into. On the shoulders, I added even more black into these yellow vents. Again, these are all separate pieces, so they took no time at all to detail up. I did think about adding some silver paint to these molded in pipes on the lower arm, but I decided against it as I think they'd stand out a little too much. 
Still, the option is here if you wanted to go that route, though it would require some very basic masking. Lastly, we have the head, where I popped off this side piece to dab some black paint into the vent. This is always one of my favorite touch-ups, and it really beats the molded-in vents of older Master Grades. Also, I just have to point out that the head Vulcans come in that great silver. They add so much detail to this head and require no additional work on your part. Just fantastic. Rounding out my basic detailing, I added some black into this dash on the V-fin, just to make it stand out more. Alright, the build for this kit was flat out amazing. Being easy to put together, but still remaining interesting the whole way through. The great part separation also makes both snap builds and custom paint jobs extremely simple. So naturally, this build receives a well-deserved 5 out of 5. Now that we've got this kit built, let's see how we turned out. Diving into probably the most interesting aspect of this kit's appearance, we have these very blocky proportions. There's a general bulkiness found throughout this suit that just screams 80s mecha anime, and I am all for it. The chest specifically is a bit larger than on previous kits, looking extra blocky thanks to how high the waist skirts are. It's a great centerpiece for this suit. I will admit though, it took me a minute to get used to just how flat it is. I know that sounds kind of weird, but look at how much this red section protrudes on the version 2.0, compared to this Verka. It's kind of jarring when you notice it, though I am liking it more and more over time, especially when comparing it to the original anime. Regardless, I just love the more anime accurate take here, and all these sharp edges found throughout this silhouette. The head is also probably my new favorite rendition for the Zeta Gundam. Just look at how well refined these edges on the face are. Just perfect. The arms down through the legs are pretty phenomenal too, being sleek, yet somehow still maintaining that 80s bulk when they flare out towards the bottom. Everything is just really well defined here. It kinda makes the version 2.0 look bad by comparison, with its much smaller chest and more gangly limbs. I remember in that review, I praised how anime accurate it was, and I do still think it looks great, with almost no needless details. However, this Verka improves the appearance in just about every way. On to the colors, things get a little weird, mainly with this blue. You'll notice it's quite a bit darker than usual, coming off muted next to the 2.0. Looking at the full picture though, it does blend very well with this pure white and deep red, so I do think it works. The yellow though isn't exactly what I'm into. Usually in Verka kits, we get more of an orange hue, but here it's about the purest yellow you can get. Personally, I think it's a little too bright on this blue, but that could just be me. Of course, with this part separation being as great as it is, it would be really easy to swap out this yellow with something a bit darker. Moving on to these decals, this kit comes with a huge sheet of water slides. They're mainly caution signs, but you do get some very small model numbers. They're honestly a little too small for my taste, so I think I'm probably going to try and track down some alternatives. Regardless, you're definitely going to want a top coat if you plan to decal up this kit, as I could see some of these smaller caution signs going missing really quickly. For fans of the original anime, this is THE Zeta Gundam Master Grade. The details and proportions are so close to the anime that it actually took me a minute to get used to them. And what issues I do have with the colors would be an easy fix thanks to that amazing part separation. So of course, we have to give this appearance another perfect 5 out of 5. While this Master Grade has been amazing so far, being a Zeta Gundam, I'm willing to bet we're going to run into some issues with this articulation. As usual, let's start with these feet. Like most Zeta kits, we get a great downward bend, this time from two swivels inside the foot. We don't get anything upwards though. The ankles have even more swivels in them. First is a just alright side to side tilt, then we have some really limited twist, and finally a solid forward tilt. Like the feet though, you don't get much backwards. Moving on up to the knee, we have an alright 135 degree bend. There's a lot going on around this joint though all for the transformation, so it can be a little finicky to get just right. If you do want a little more out of this knee though, you can actually detach the thigh, allowing the leg to bend almost completely backwards. This can actually give you close to a 180 degree bend. Doing so does expose quite a bit of inner frame though, so I really wouldn't rely on this. Rounding out these really complex legs, we have the standard swivel on top for some 360 degree spins. 
Onto the hips, we have a ton of extra mechanisms for the transformation, but as far as articulation goes, they're pretty simple. They're basically just a swivel on a peg. You get some really amazing kicks out of them, and by moving the side skirts out of the way, you can get some solid splits. Unfortunately though, this doesn't exactly translate to good ground poses. With the feet not having the best side-to-side -side movement or twist, it's really difficult to get him stable on the ground. There's also this locking mechanism in the hips that always pops off. It's used for the transformation, and it does an alright job of keeping the legs in place. But it will disconnect from the hips just about every time you move the legs. You're definitely going to want to pick up an action base if you plan to do any posing here, as his ground options are both underwhelming and fairly frustrating. The front and back skirts are pretty standard on this kit. Nothing too crazy, but the side skirts are something else. They're a hinge on a swivel on a ball joint. You can pretty much put these side skirts in any position you'd like. Working our way up the chest, we get another series of swivels. They all come together to give you some decent tilts, but his twists are pretty restricted by the front and back skirts. The shoulders on this Zeta Gundam have a lot going on. This white section actually has some articulation to it. It allows for an amazing lateral pop out. We also get some great backwards movement as well, though nothing forwards. This is such an improvement over the 2.0, but it does expose the hollow area inside the chest. The shoulder armor itself has some movement too. The front flaps are on hinges, allowing you to fold them out of the way for the upper arm spin. This top section can also hinge upwards to help you get more lateral movement. Doing so does look a little strange to me though, so I tend to not use this. Rounding out these shoulders, we get the usual spins, and the arm itself is connected to the chest via a swivel. Going down the arm here, we get a solid 135 degree bend from the elbow. Pretty standard stuff at this point. There's also an added swivel below that allows the forearm to tilt side to side. It's surprisingly useful for shooting poses. The hands on this Zeta Gundam attach via a ball joint and a hinge, and the thumb itself is on its own ball joint. This kit uses the now expected interchangeable fingers. Not my favorite, but they do get the job done. We have a set for holding the rifle and beam saber, and also a set of open hands. For the closed fist, we actually get an independent set of hands. They look great, as they don't have that awkward thumb that can hang off on the more standard hands. Back to the suit itself though, we now have this head. It's a fairly deep ball joint on a crazy set of swivels. This neck can extend extremely far forwards. I honestly can't think of any reason you'd ever want to use this, but it's here if you want to go for it. Oh, also, yes, the V-fin can fold up for the transformation. I am a little nervous about it snapping though, but thankfully Bandai included an additional non-moving V-fin too, just in case. Turning this kit around, let's look over this backpack. This main fin has the usual foldout you'd expect from a Zeta Gundam. The wing binders are on two swivels connected to a peg, allowing them to fold out. Unfortunately, the wing binders themselves are connected to these swivels with a vertical sliding mechanism, so you're surprisingly limited here. And I think that should about cover this articulation. Honestly, there's a lot here, so I wouldn't be surprised if I missed something. While having this many joints is usually a good thing, all these swivels and hinges really don't add up. Because of how limited these feet are and how annoying the hips can be, there's next to nothing available to you on the ground. An action base is basically required for this kit. However, from the waist up, this Master Grade does have a surprising amount of movement. So let's give this articulation a solid 4 out of 5. Now that we know what kind of poses he can hit, let's see what gimmicks this kit comes with, and finally tackle that transformation. First up is his iconic beam rifle. Like the suit itself, the part separation here is fantastic, with even these yellow dashes being separate pieces. It's a pretty noticeable improvement over the 2.0. There's also some basic engineering here, allowing you to extend the barrel outwards for the Wave Rider. However, despite having dedicated hands for holding the rifle, he does have some issues posing with it. The butt of this rifle is just too long, so there's really no way for him to comfortably hold it. It'll pretty much always be awkwardly floating in front of his shoulder. Still, it can look great from the right angle. It just takes quite a bit of patience to get there. Next up, we have the Token Beam Sabers. They're very simple, but I do like this deep black color. It's really unique when it comes to lead Gundams. 
Of course, he can hold these beam sabers just fine, thanks to that dedicated set of hands. I'd say if you're going for action poses, then you're probably going to want to stick with the beam sabers over that rifle. They're just much easier to work with and still look great. You can also store these beam sabers on the inside of the side skirts. They seem to stay in place pretty well thanks to a peg inside. Rounding out his basic arsenal, we have his iconic shield. As expected of this kit, the part separation is great here, with all these colors being individual pieces. If I remember correctly, the 2.0 didn't even provide stickers. It connects to the arm with a peg, and I've had no weight or connection issues so far. All around a great shield, and I don't see any reason to remove it. Onto the optional equipment, he comes with his grenade launcher attachments that plug into the forearm. You can pop these into this connection point and slide them forwards to reveal missiles inside. While they come in a pretty alright gray, I just know they look better in some bright red or something. They shouldn't be too difficult to paint up, as they look easy to mask around. And that's really it for his arsenal. Yeah, it actually feels kind of sparse. Sure, you get everything you'd expect, but I can't help but miss that 2.0 selection. That kit came with his Hyper Mega Launcher, which was a fantastic addition, even if it was kind of hard for him to get a good pose with. The 2.0 also came with a dedicated stand in the form of this hangar bay. While omitting these extras probably helped keep the price down, I can't help but miss those extras. Now let's tackle his main gimmick, the transformation into his Wave Rider. I know it seems a little anticlimactic to just cut to it finished here, but this transformation was hard enough to pull off my own time. I couldn't imagine trying to make it look good on video too. Yeah, this transformation is really technical, maybe even more so than previous Zeta Master Grids. There were just so many micro steps that you could easily overlook, like sliding these black covers over the knees. I actually shot a bunch of footage before I realized I had actually missed them. I also found many of these connection points to be fairly difficult to line up. I had the hardest time trying to connect the inside of the wing binders to this connection on the forearm. They just wouldn't fit into place. I actually think the version 2.0's transformation was a little easier to pull off, but that might be a controversial opinion. I don't know. Regardless, when you actually do get this kit transformed, the end result looks absolutely amazing. It's like he just flew out of the anime. The proportions of the chest, with its more flat design, make a great front for this wave rider, and I really like the length of the shield. The leg bend also looks really dynamic, with all these sliding components on full display. There's also included landing gear. It's actually baked right into the suit itself and the shield, so you don't have to break out a Ziploc bag of extra parts every time you transform this guy. If you do want to get this wave rider aerial though, he does come with a special attachment piece. It seems to work pretty well, and I didn't find any weight issues with it, though I'd be curious to see how it holds up after a couple of weeks in the air. And that about wraps up these gimmicks. It's really just your basic arsenal implemented fairly well. The transformation though was a major step up in terms of appearance, but kind of a step back in simplicity. All said and done, I'd say these gimmicks are about what you'd expect from a Zeta Gundam. So let's give these gimmicks a very respectable 4 out of 5. While the version 2.0 had all of this plus an included stand and the Hyper Mega Launcher, the improved part separation kind of makes up for them. Alright, now let's wrap all this up for an average score. Here are the scores for the build, appearance, articulation, and gimmicks. Tallying all this up and dividing, this Master Grade Zeta Gundam version Katoki receives an average score of 4.5 out of 5, or a 90%. That sounds like a solid score for this kit. This Master Grade was one of my favorite builds in a long time, and I could see buying another one just to make use of this amazing part separation. This appearance is also exactly what I want out of a Zeta Gundam, being about as anime accurate as you can get. I really hope this approach is used for future Verka kits. When it comes to the articulation, like most Zeta Gundam kits, there are some issues. I honestly didn't enjoy getting most of these poses, especially the grounded shots. I will note the sizable improvement above the waist though. If you have an action base on hand, then you can still get some very solid stuff here. The gimmicks are really the only area that I would have liked to have seen more from. There's nothing really interesting here, and you don't get as many rifle poses as you'd expect. The transformation though looks fantastic but it is a bit of a trade-off with the version 2.0, 
feeling quite a bit more complex. While the version 2.0 was amazing for its time, and I still think the scores for it make total sense in that context, there's over 15 years of improvement with this Verka, and it really shows. If you're a fan of the original anime, then this is THE Master Grade Zeta Gundam to pick up. Of course, now I'm really hoping for a Gundam Mark II version Katsuki. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long for that one. And that should about do it. If you've enjoyed this review, feel free to subscribe, leave a comment, or like this video. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, where I post random builds and figures I pick up. Here's a playlist of other Gundam reviews too, if you're interested in checking out some other kits. Alright, thanks for watching, and see you next time.